Hi, I'm David Gilliver. I'm a local Melbourne photographer here in Australia. Um, today we're looking at the Godox MS300 uh, Studio Flash. Um, we're going to unbox it, set it up um, and have a look at some of the things it can do. Okay, so let's get this thing out of the box and see what's in there. So the, the usual paperwork, small manual in here. We have the MS300 itself. An Australian power, power cable. A couple of fuses. And we have a bulb for the modeling light on this unit. Um, the flash itself, the flash bulb is already in the unit. Now you'll note on the box of this, There's a reflector on the front of the flash, and as you'll see, there isn't actually one in the box, so if you want one of those, you'll need to buy that separately. Okay, so this is a fairly small and um, relatively portable studio flash. Um, a lot smaller than a lot of other studio flashes I've seen. Okay, so let's put this on our stand and have a, a good look at it uh, in a bit more detail. Okay, so let's have a look at the front of it first. Um, comes with the cap. These sort of caps, you normally don't want to leave them on um, once you've plugged them in, so let's get this off. So on the front of this, um, pretty standard for any studio strobe. Um, the bulb you're seeing in there right now is the actual flash bulb, the modeling light bulb in. Okay, so this is a Bowens mount on the front of this. Okay, so that's the front of the unit basically set up. All right, now before we start firing the flash, we can actually turn on the modeling light. All right, there it's a, on a, what's known as a proportional setting. That means that um, depending on the power of the flash, it will brighten or darken. If I hit another button, it's currently at 100%. So that's as bright as the modeling light will go. And of course, you can have the modeling light turned off. So on the back of the unit. Okay, so on the back here we have LCD panel, a digital readout. Um, we have our control knob, which can be used for making various adjustments. We have a group and channel button here. We have S1 and S2, they're the slave modes. We have a, the button for the audio, which is basically that beeping you're hearing as I turn that. The modeling light button for turning that on and off in different modes and the test fire button itself. Okay, this is a sync connector here. This is a three and a half millimeter sync connector. Um, much better than the PC sync type connectors that have traditionally been used with flush. Um, there is a USB connector on this. Um, this has inbuilt radio triggering, um, but if you want to use one of the older style FT16 triggers, um, you can plug the receiver into this and use that to control it. Um, power cord, of course, on off switch. So it's a pretty basic sort of setup on the back of this for a studio strobe. So this does have an umbrella mount on it. So I've got a Godox umbrella, collapsible umbrella here. That hole right here is the umbrella mount. Right, so that's always your simplest modifier to put on the front of any flash. Right, and obviously you can put actual Bowens mount attachments on the front of this rather than umbrella. Okay, so let's talk about triggering this flash now. Now, as I pointed out before, it's got a sync cable connector here, so you can plug, say, a, a cable direct from the camera, which is probably not what you want to do. Um, or you can plug in some other radio technology if you've got some other radio transmitting system. But the real beauty of this flash is it's got a bunch of triggering mechanisms built into it. Um, so the most basic one it's got here is the S1, S2 modes. Um, this is optical triggering. So here on top, there is an optical sensor. And by activating those modes, S1 or S2, 
we can simply trigger this flush with a burst of another flush. So if we have it in S1 mode, that basically means when a flush fires, this will simply fire at the same time, um, as long as the other flush can be seen by the optical sensor up here. If we put it into S2 mode, this is slightly more sophisticated. This is to deal with a flush that might be, say, a TDL flush that's on your camera. Um, a pop-up flush might be a good example of that. Um, where you want this to fire, but you want to, don't want it to fire on the pre-flush that TTL does. You want it to fire on the second flush, the one immediately afterwards. So in an S2 mode, it will ignore the pre-flush and it will fire on the real flush. So of course, one of the big advantages with a small unit like this um, is that it is actually compatible with the existing Godox radio triggering system. So if you've already got a Godox X1T trigger, an X-Pro trigger, or an X2T trigger, they will work seamlessly with this without needing to plug anything else into this flash. Okay, so if we're gonna use the Godox X-Pro trigger for this, turn this one on. This one's currently set to channel one, group A. So we'll need to make sure the flush is set to the same setting as that. So if I tap the group button here, it's currently on F, we'll dial that back to A. If you find that beeping really annoying, we can just turn the audio off. Um, now, if I hold down this button, because this is on, currently in channel four, now the channel starts flushing. Right, and now we're on A and one. And so that should give us um, wireless control of the flush. So if I do a test fire now with my trigger, right, it fired, and it's also dialed in the same power setting as what was currently set on this. So this is currently saying, 1 over 16 plus 0.3, plus a third of a stop. Um, so you can see now those are in sync. If I turn this dial up, you'll actually see it's changing in real time here. Right, so it's already set to half power. Right, this light comes back on when it's ready to fire again. If I turn it down, Right, you'll notice that this is flushing. That would indicate that it's dumping the excess power that it built up. Um, it, to fast track that, I can of course just test fire it myself to release the power. Okay, so I can of course turn the modeling light on and off on the trigger. So if I hit the MOD button here, you'll see the modeling lights come on. Um, it's currently in proportional mode. That was the last mode that I had it in. I can tap this button a couple of times and turn it into the the 100% mode where I independently control that power level. But I'm gonna put it back on the proportional mode. Right, so you'll actually see here, the flash is currently on full power. That's what it's reflecting. If I turn this down, you'll actually see the modeling light is starting to dim there. All right, so that might be useful if you've got multiple lights set up and you wanna see um, the relative power of each one. Okay, so if we're gonna play with S1 or S2 mode, we might have a camera with a flash on it. Um, we're gonna pretend that this flash can only do ETDL. Um, and we will need to put the optical slave on if we're gonna trigger it this way. All right, so I can put it on S1, and then I can come around here and I can try and take a photo of the flash. All right, so this flash went off but there's no sign that that light has hit the backdrop there at all. all right, so S1 mode, it hasn't handled the pre-flush very well. If I put on an S2 mode, it will ignore the pre-flush and fire when I actually want it to flash. So this time, all right, so if you can see that photo, you can see I've now got overexposure because that flush has fired on 1 8th power um, and it's ignored the pre-flush that the TDL system put out here. Of course, with the Godox radio system, um, you can use a speed light itself as a radio master. So I've got this one currently dialed in to quarter power for group A. Um, I've got the channels and everything dialed in. So if I now take a test fire here, right, the actual studio strobe fired, the MS300 fired with that. So when we're playing with the modeling light, one thing you can do with this unit is, and it's a fairly standard sort of feature, is to stop the modeling light from staying on the moment you take the photo. So what we can do here is we can turn the modeling light on, but then if we hold this button down, you'll see another symbol will appear here. That will indicate that the moment that we take the photo, 
no flash fires, it'll actually turn off the modeling light so it doesn't interfere with what the strobe's doing. So, right, you might see a, a slower flicker there, and that's the modeling light going off and coming back on when it's ready to go again. Now, if we had the beep going, you'd probably see that the light coming back on would be synced to the beep. So what we're gonna do here is do a power comparison. Um, so we're just gonna photograph the empty box. Um, we've got the MS300 here on a stand, and this time we've put a Bowens mount adapter on it um, and put one of the Godox um, collapsible soft boxes on it. I'm gonna trigger it with the X-Pro trigger, but I've got this flash set to full power right now. So if I come here and I take a photo, Right, I'm at um, F22 there at ISO 100, and you can see the box is coming out okay, um, but it's actually overexposing a little bit on this side of the box. So we're gonna, just gonna switch out this flash and try and do the same thing with a V860 speed light um, and see what kind of power we get out of that at full power. Okay, so this time we have, we're shooting the same subject, just the empty box again. This time we've got the same modifier again, and this time we're using the V860 instead of the MS300. So let's try the same camera settings and see how it goes in terms of exposure. So this is F22 ISO 100, All right? Now it looks okay, but the MS300 had this area here blinking to indicate overexposure and we don't have it blinking this time. Now I can just try going back to F16. That'll be one stop brighter and see whether that gets the blinking that we had before. Right, I still don't have that blinking, so we're still not at the same exposure yet. So if I go back to F11 and try the same thing. Right, now I've got that blinking indicating overexposure. So it looks like about a two stop difference here between the speed light and the MS300. Now that's obviously full power, you wouldn't drive a, a flash normally at full power, but it's nice to know if you ever need that kind of power that it's got it. Okay, so this unit's a really nice little compact and reasonably powerful unit, 300 watt seconds. As we saw, it's about two stops brighter than what a speed light can do. As you can see, it's not a very big unit um, in terms of you know, size compared to a speed light. It's only a little bit bigger. Um, great value for money. The recycle time on this um, is about 1.8 seconds at full power. It'll be even faster on lower power settings. Um, and it's pretty good for a studio strobe unit as well. Um, really excellent value. Excellent value, little studio strobe. So, the first really interesting thing it can do is you can put actually put two of the 350 series speed lights.